I'm Shelly Henderson, and I am excited to be here today with our Elements team. I'd like to introduce you to Nancy Fetters. Hello. Who is <laughs> our trips and travel extraordinaire. She's actually famous in Butler County for her trips and travel. <laughs> But actually during COVID-19, she has um, adapted and adjusted as part of Elements and helping everywhere inside of Westover and anything they have from activities to taking our tests to all kinds of things here at Westover. John Frost, the leader of the Elements team. John um, is going to talk a lot about what Elements is. So if you're watching this and you don't know what I'm talking about, that's okay. Lori Belsario, she is a veteran here at Westover. I was saying to her, she's almost like a pillar. She is the Director of Programming here for Westover, and we'll hear a lot about the fun things that are happening and how life has changed for her during COVID. So welcome, everybody. Thank you so much. We've done um, a bunch of clips today really speaking about Westover and this great place. A lot of people call me and uh, don't know, don't have a clue what the inside of Westover is like. So talking about each of you, I want them to get to know you. So, Nancy, how long have you been here? Uh, just about 19 years. Wow. Tell me um, some great moments in 19 years. Um, Sweetest, the funniest, and most surprising moment. Probably the sweetest um, with trips and travel was with Shirley Philly, who has passed away. Um, she wanted to go on the Cincinnati dinner train that had um, 1940s atmosphere. And um, we made this happen, and it was a wonderful Saturday evening, and she got to have dinner on the Cincinnati dinner train. And then shortly after that, um, she passed away. So that was probably one of the sweetest. sweetest that um, is sweet. Yes funniest in in all your time the funniest okay the funniest is i took a group of 25 um, older adults to, on a hawaiian cruise which was a fabulous trip um, we are coming home and we are in the hawaii airport honolulu airport and i have a group of 25 older adults that are technically challenged very technically challenged and there is not a person to help with the group check-in. So they, I have a kiosk for 25 older adults, and they are freaking yeah. out. That's awesome. They have no clue what a kiosk is. Yep. They have no clue how to check in. Yep. They, so I said, guys, I got this. I know what I'm doing, I got this. Line up, and it took a little bit, but they were freaking out, and um, we made it to the plane on time, and everything was great. So the last thing is your most surprising moment in 19 years. Most surprising moment. Um, on another trip of trips and travel, we were in Lake Placid. Um, and it was, we went through fall to winter to fall, but we were in Lake Placid and we were spending the night in Lake Placid. And um, we had a wonderful bus driver, Marty, but Marty got the bus stuck in Lake Placid in not that much snow, but the bus was stuck. And we're looking for salt, everything. They, this little <laughs> bit of, of snow was nothing to them, but it was to us, us, you know, Cincinnati, little snowflake. So we had a whole load of bus and we had to, the bus was stuck. I had to put them all in taxi cabs up the hill to the hotel with all their luggage, their medicine, all that. It took probably three hours to get them up there. Um, it was kind of crazy, but um, it's all good. So yeah. fun, so fun, so fun. Well, I know people brag all around Butler County about your trips and travel, so, and I know a lot of them sell out. Yes, they do. Yeah. So with COVID, are you getting a lot of phone calls? When are we going or where are we going soon? Are you getting a lot of uh, contact still from people that are calling? I am. Um, and it's sad. It's, you know, I says, just hang in there. Next year will be better. Yeah. We'll be back on the bus next year. Next year. Um, they're all, um, one of their favorite things to do is to go to the Cincinnati Pops 
a music hall, the Broadway series. We have Hamilton coming. We've got Pretty Women coming. We've got My Fair Lady coming. We have tickets for all that. All of it's been moved back. So they're really anxious to get on the bus to continue with the Broadway series. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. So, John, let's start with you. What is Elements? Elements, people hear about it all over town. Elements. I hear it, it's Berkeley, I hear it's Westover. What, by definition, if I've never seen you before, what is Elements? Um, Elements is a wellness center that is located inside of Berkeley and Westover. Um, it is open to the residents, but also open to the community, which is what I really think makes it so unique and special mm -hmm. because it kind of is a bridge for a lot of the people who do move in here. They can still live inside of a facility, but then they also still get to see their friends who may not live inside of the facility. How so many it kinda, members are there? Uh, we have 1,200 members in our system. I'd probably say about 500 who actively come on That's a regular awesome. basis. Yeah. That's awesome. So I know COVID is the elephant in the room. How have you had to adapt to life with COVID as an element? Well, COVID hit us pretty hard. Um, so since we are a wellness center in the beginning, basically gyms got shut down, period, but also the retirement community got shut down. So in essence, we would have gotten shut down no matter what. Um, but yeah, right now we are just really focusing more on the residents. Um, it is, I, I've gotten to kind of dive deeper into activities. Um, Lori has kind of been able to show me a lot of different things that we do here as far as activities goes. Um, so before it was a lot more exercising and teaching classes, sure. but now it is unique because now we can kind of individualize our, our sessions with the residents now. Um, and even though it may be, you would think that we wouldn't be as busy because of coronavirus, but we're even more busy because now we have to make sure that each of these residents are now getting that individual attention that they would have gotten in group settings that they're not getting anymore. Hmm. Yeah. So, do you ever get close to a resident as a, as a team member here? Have you ever gotten really close to a resident that lives at Westover? Oh, yeah. How long have you worked here? Eight years. Who is that person that stands out in your heart? Tell me about without their name, per se. Um, not, not giving them name. Um, so, it was a uh, resident. Um, she had moved in here. I'd probably say she moved in here a couple of years before I started working here. Her husband had found out that he had cancer and he didn't tell her. And he had moved her in without telling her that he was gonna die. But he wanted her safe and set up for the rest of her life. Yeah. So, so he moved her in and they were probably living here for I wanna say around a, maybe four months when then one day um, he got rushed to the hospital and didn't come back and he had passed away and all that time he knew he had cancer but he just didn't want her to worry and he wanted right. to kind of get her into Westover before he died and she I had to that. handle all this on her own um, and she was very distraught and sad over that um, and one of the ways to get her out of that was that one of the nurses got me with her to start walking in the pool together and uh, her and I we became very good friends walking in the pool and um, she passed away June 6, 2015. And that is still one of the hardest deaths I ever had about. to deal with. Yeah, I, that, that made me kind of question a little bit if I wanted to still work here because to have your heart broken, and then that was hard for my wife because my wife has to deal with those highs when and lows. When you come home and say, guess what happened to yeah, me today? You know, I know. It's, I mean, it's, she always says it's waves because I can come and say, hey, guess what? Um, I saw a resident walk after a broken hip today. And then I can also say, hey, hey I, lost one. I saw a resident fall today totally and they broke their it. hip and then I don't think they'll be the same. So, you know, it's, it, it, it hits you hard in the heart. So how do you keep it fun? You are a big part of the fun at Westover. Like, let's face it, you, Lori, Nancy, how do you keep the smiles coming? How do you keep the fun factor? You are the fun team. You are. Well, for me, I just, I think it's just being genuine. Um, I think when I was interviewing someone sometime for a job and they said that you should approach older adults as if they're children. 
And as soon as he said that, I just put his resume to the side. Because from my experience, I think the main thing that yep. makes them feel at home is when you treat them with respect and you treat them as if they're not a child or they're, they still matter. And when you treat them as a friend and, you be, and you're genuine with them, they, I mean, I think it's 100% reciprocated and then it just lightens the mood. Gotcha. Yeah. So Miss Lori, Lori has worked here how long? 38 years. Is there an event that stands out to you or some program activity? There's many different words. In your 30 years, if you could recreate one, what is it? Well, I have several, and one of them, of course, is the Derby Day Party. It's mm -hmm. a Kentucky Derby. Everybody gets into it. There's a big crowd. We're betting. We have a beautiful buffet by the culinary team. But the one that sticks out is um, a while back, we had a hot air balloon. And mm. there was a gentleman who was 93 years old. His dream was to do a hot air balloon. So I, I, it was across the street at the time, and um, sure enough, we got him in there, and he said, yep, I'm 93 years old, and I, I get to that. tether, and we tethered. We tethered all the residents here in a hot air balloon. I love that. And I that. have to tell you, it was the most exciting thing I've ever seen, because oh. he was so thrilled. It was his last wish, actually. So are there opportunities for families to get involved when it's not COVID? Just for a minute, let's close our eyes. 20 years ago, like, if I, if I move my mom here, are there activities or programs that I can be part of with her? Absolutely. And um, with that, there's a lot of family members who volunteer for us. Talk about that. Well, when the volunteers, they, they come to an activity and they say, you know, we would really like to help you. Mm -hmm. Can we do that? I said, absolutely. We, we would love to have volunteers, to, especially family members. Mm -hmm. And then they know what their family is doing because sometimes they'll read it in a newsletter, mm -hmm. but they're not actually there to see mm -hmm. the fun and the excitement. So if they would like to volunteer, we'd love to have them when this COVID is done. They would call you? Absolutely. Awesome. Yeah, yeah they would. Okay, let's have some fun. Ready? Nancy. Personally, one place to go on vacation, just one. I can tell you what Katie Crank said. Where would you go? Hilton Head. Hilton Head. Same question. Hilton Head. Hilton Head. I've never been there. Lori, say it. <laughs> say Las it. Vegas, Las Vegas. Nevada. <laughs> <laughs> what is something? your coworkers don't know about you? Well, I talk a lot, so they know a lot about me. <laughs> <laughs> um, I helped deliver um, some baby pigs. <gasps> really? Yes. Okay. When yes. was this? Oh, this is probably about mm, 15 years ago. Yeah. So the pig needed your help? The pig, yeah. I see. My husband's hand was too big for the guilt. Got it. So awesome. Is that on <laughs> tape? That's so awesome. John, tell me something your coworkers don't know about you. Uh, they might know it, but I've had uh, 40 foster brothers and sisters in my life, and my oldest brother is adopted, and my younger brother is adopted. <gasps> I did not know that, John. Lori, same question. You know, so a lot of them know this, but a lot of them don't. I have an identical twin sister. She has a twin. Yeah. I if do. you're watching, everybody, you heard it here first. She has a twin. That's crazy. All right. Summer or winter? Summer. 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 Beach or mountains? Beach. Mountains. Beach. So we've been talking about Westover. If you had to describe in one word this place, how would you describe it? One word? One word. Friendship. Friendship. Community. Community. Family. Family. So, Lori, tell us about programs in general right now. COVID is the elephant in the room. It's a tough time, I know. We are the sunshine for every single person and inside. I agree, but I have to tell you, during this time, I found it to be very good for me because we had to do one-on-ones in the room. We got to know the resident better, 
And we also, you know, sometimes you need to know that to know what to program for them. Yeah. They, some of them are not social people, so that means we have to hit on something else. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe it's the, the heritage, maybe it's the food, maybe it's what you said, the beach or the mountain. Yeah. So it, we, we were able to uh, get to know them better. But we need some, because we can't go out, we have to bring everything into them. So, of course, um, you know, with church, we have the capability to do that because why? Because Jonathan Frost helped us out with that one. one of, we ask our residents also if they're able to um, help us out. They're very musically inclined. So now we're able to have eight people in a group and we have concerts using our residents. Love that. So it sounds like you are kind of merging together re innovatively programs, elements, and how we can serve and help as a family. So, John, talk about um, virtual and talk about element programming, and I know that affects Berkeley and Westover. You've, you've got a lot of new, exciting things going on, right? Uh, yes. Um, so right now, we are basically having our exercise classes virtually through three, basically, three different venues. Um, one is going to be YouTube, two is Facebook, and then the third one is Touchtown, where basically Touchtown is going to upload the YouTube video. So it's still YouTube, but it's Touchtown. Now, the YouTube and Facebook, they are open to basically anybody that can watch that. So that is our outdoor members, members who may not be um, residents here, indoor residents. Um, Touchtown is specific to the resident, and, now, um, and it's something that uh, we just started, not Touchtown, but this new um, software touchdown has for us that we can start putting videos with music and the actual words that we say on touchdown mm. and we just started that a couple weeks ago where the classes that we teach we upload them and then the residents can start doing those classes in their rooms um, and that has been pretty amazing so far yeah mm, I think it's, we, we had a really good reaction to that so far nice yeah so Nancy if your mom was moving into Westover tomorrow what two programs or what would she do that you think would excite her? Um, we started um, because of trips to travel it was on hold. A um, couple things we're trying to, you know, I did a mystery local lunch, a happy hour on the road before. So now um, we're bringing that in. Um, we're bringing the roses in. We're going to bring Skyline in. Um, so many of our people love to go to um, Belterra to gamble. We can't do that anymore. So we're bringing lottery tickets in. Lottery tickets, lottery that's tickets. awesome. Um, we're bringing a um, couple new things we're bringing in is um, a happy hour at home and we're gonna have tattoos. Tattoos. Yes. Right on. <laughs> Um, I feel very blessed. I live on a farm, and um, through all this, I have shared um, our sunflowers. Um, people love the sunflowers. They're now putting them on their patio and let the birds come. Um, our sweet corn, we brought sweet corn in to the residents, and they're cooking their own sweet Personally corn. Personally brought your corn from yeah. your farm. Yeah. That says so much about you. Um, I love what Sean has done with our garden. So we've embraced that and had have flower cutting there. Just they feel normal again. I mean, these are things they used to do at home and now. Mm -hmm. So if, if my mom moved in, God bless her, though she has passed away, she would want to continue to do the things that she did at home. And here at Westover, that's our goal, to try to get them on the bus, you know, let them to take them places where they used to go and they no longer can drive and do things at home. That That's do. awesome. What is drumming? I'm hearing about Westover and drumming. Oh, it's our cardio drumming. So cardio drumming is really, if you have anything that you can hit with and hit on, you can do cardio drumming. It's, uh, there's different layers or levels that you can do, but I try to keep it very minimal so that it can kind do of Do I literally go to hit a drum? No, so you're so really I use it as so if you're an official cardio jumping class that I was doing, you'd have a bin, you'd have a fit ball, one of the big exercise balls that you have on there, and then you'd have some weighted drumsticks, mm. and then you're just having a good time. Like we play different songs, you're hitting the ball to the beat, 
doing different exercises as you're hitting the ball. So you might do squats as you're hitting the ball. You might like do shoulder presses as you're hitting the ball. So yeah, it's a lot of different things that you can do with it. Hmm. It's a lot of fun. Hmm. So it sounds like you all have a variety of things for spiritual, yoga, drumming, lottery tickets, travel, parties in a good day. Talk a little more about the spiritual part of how you help residents at Westover. Is there something that stands out in your mind um, for people watching this that are like, well, oh, I really want to know if you have a Bible study or I really want to know for my spirit. Do you offer meditation? Do you have, you know, the world is changing. You know, there's a generation of a whole different spirituality. How would you talk about that? What would you say? I print off the, the gospel from Notre Dame's website um, for one of our residents for her oh, to read. I love that. So personally that's somewhere along the religious spirituality. Yeah. Good. John, how would you answer that big long question? I just choked out. Uh so I'd probably say for myself, um, I was very fortunate with this year with COVID hitting and it was the first year for some people, I think almost in their lives, that they weren't able to go to church for Easter. So that Sunday I came in and I just read to each of them the resurrection story. And we just, and I, one resident in particular still <laughs> talks about it today, about how she felt that she didn't miss church, even though it wasn't church. But she, it was very hard on some of them to not go to church for Easter. And that was, that was a hard one because I mean, that was a consistent tradition. But I love how we try, and I uh -huh. love how we kind of fill up our, our, our tank, our soul. And it doesn't have to be in a, a church building that they can't go to now. It can be right where we are. How would you answer this world of spirituality? Maybe I'm not a swimmer. Maybe I'm not going to jump on the weights in here. Maybe I'm not going to join your bingo derby. But... Maybe um... we have many residents here who are spiritual, so we try to connect them with our activities. Uh, we do have a resident um, who's taken on the Bible study for us oh, really? once a week, mm -hmm, once a week for an hour. Um, we also, um, Katie Crank, um, was Katie was able to um, give communion. Um, to our residents who needed that as nice. well, and that was extremely important that to is them. Important. So, Katie was able to do that. And, um, and as far as church services go, when important um, holidays and things come up, John Frost is our, our go-to guy. Thank you so much for hanging out with me and just sharing, you know, it's a virtual world. Um, I hope it was helpful to kind of share stories of your time at Westover. And if you're watching this, thank you for tuning in and seeing Nancy, John, and Lori at Westover and all the innovative programs going on.